Well, hello there. How's everybody doing? Sunday, not quite as busy as Saturday, but I think we still got a good intimate crowd for our Q&A panel with the Power Rangers. Uh, we are going to be interviewing Allison Sullivan and Kerrigan Mahan. Uh, Allison played Lieutenant Taylor Earhart in Power Rangers Wild Force, and she was also the first person to play Barbie in a commercial. Uh, Kerrigan Mahan is a voice actor. You may know him from Vampire Hunter D, Robotech, Wicked City, VR Troopers, but you probably know him best as our future president, Goldar, from the Mighty Morphin <laughs> Power Rangers. Both All right, guys, if you have any questions, just feel free to line up at that microphone, or I can come out there and talk to you. Just raise your hand. Uh, but all right, if you guys would start with talking a little bit about yourself, that would make things a lot easier. Ladies first. Absolutely. <laughs> Hi, guys. Thanks for sitting in on our panel. <laughs> I'm Allison Sullivan. Um, I've been acting for 30 years. I know you just can't believe that. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> and... We're really grateful to be here, firstly. So thank you for having us. Texas is full of really sweet people. Like so it. thank you. It's like you guys all woke up and ate some sugar. We appreciate it, being from Los Angeles. I grew up in Los Angeles. I started to act when I was eight. Uh, and uh, this year I've been acting for 30 years. So uh, I enjoy it and been lucky to do so. And it's not all glamorous but it's fun, right? Yeah, we're having a great time. Uh, Kerrigan Mahan, I've been at it uh, kind of like Allison. I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate to be here for the first time with Allison. We've never done a, a con together and, and we've had a lot of fun and we're having a lot of fun. Um, I, I, I guess I first knew I wanted to act when I did this little skit in the third grade doing you know, some Western thing. I was the general store proprietor and I right then and there said this is it this is what I'm doing this is what I'm doing and I, you know I did all the dumb jobs that an actor does through the you know the 20s basically through my 20s um, you know tending bar to digging literally digging ditches and and I got picked up on a show called Robotech when I was 28 and I, and and it just ha it was happenstance it really was I got lucky I you know I've been imitating voices and doing voice stuff kidding around with my sister and we were always doing impressions and so I I got in on Robotech and wound up uh, getting the role of Private Sean Phillips and it, pretty much history from there. I, I I didn't pursue too much on camera from that point forward because the voiceover kind of kind of took over and I realized you know geez I don't need to memorize lines I don't have to go into makeup uh, you know, I don't have to Love match myself up. from setup to setup, and it's like I, I really like this. It's fun, and and so that pretty much wound up being my career for, well, probably uh, that uh, Robotech was eighty five, over thirty years, and I'm grateful. And I got to tell you something, guys. I've done a few of these now over the, the these years, uh, quite a few, and I have never. Ever. I, I raised a toast last night to a table of 25 of, of, of volunteers and, and fans and guests and artists all at the table of, I think there were probably over 25, 30 people at this table. I, I, I've never had an experience this good. I've never seen anything like it. I, it's just one big friendly place. It can't really be like this. I, I, it's like, come on, somebody get angry. Somebody <laughs> say something nasty. Cause, it's not cause our these, style. These, no, no, don't. No, these things can get pretty, you know, a lot of infighting, weird stuff behind the scenes, and none of that is happening here. It's absolutely a lovely place. You know, when my sister heard I was going to Waco, she said, oh, I can just picture it, you know, with attitude. And I'm, I'm already texting and sending and saying, uh-uh, uh-uh, you can take your little Seattle, Washington and stick it. This place is really nice, okay? And it's pretty, and your downtown is charming, and, uh, you know, maybe I'm going to move to Waco. I don't know. We're going to find you a real estate agent. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's, 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 uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. 
All right, so moving forward, uh, what was the progression there? Because you did Vampire Hunter D, and that was an excellent series of uh, anime movies that I loved. That was a nasty role that I played. Yeah. A really wicked bastard. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I don't know what the pro progression really was. Uh, we were kind of like, a, um, uh, like an acting troupe. If, if you follow my drift. There, yeah. You know, from Robotech, we all became very much family, and it was a very small anime, a, a world of anime. And this is back in the 80s, when, you know, anime wasn't, anime wasn't what it, what it is today. You, you, you know, it was not anywhere near as popular. Um, and I don't think people really realize that, you know, we're sinking, you know, we're single tracking, and sinking all of that while we're acting. So it's, uh, it's got a lot of moving parts, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, you're looking at a script. You don't necessarily have the uh, person that you're acting with is never there. They've either recorded and you're hearing them in your headset, or they have not recorded and you're just looking at the script and seeing what you are reacting to. So we're acting alone, and we're being directed from a director in the booth behind the glass. And um, on some occasions, I was my own director, uh, because I did a lot of directing in the day of anime. So anyway, that, that uh, Vampire Hunter D, where that fell into things, I really don't remember what year Vampire Hunter D was, 90? 1985 85? was when the first one came out. The next one came out, I think, four years later, and it was so good. Like I And is that fan. the one I was Regancy four years later? Uh, were you in, I didn't, uh, so I did see that you were in Vampire Hunter D, but I didn't see anything about the sequel, but I know that there were two movies that came out within like six years of each other. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just, it's a really strong, dark manga. And yeah. in the 80s, the, man the, an the anime that was coming over was all dark. Like, so was Wicked City. Oh yeah, I, I played some, I mean, I, I went into my stuff about two years ago because I wanted to make sure I kind of knew what I'd done because we do so much. I mean, again, it's like an acting troupe. We sometimes walked out of the studio with the sun rising. We were doing so much dubbing in three little studios under one roof called Intersound. And you would literally just go from one studio finish up that character and go into Studio B and not really know what you're even playing. And the director says, you're going to play this character. And, you know, um, there's a, there was just a lot of work, a lot of work done. So there's a lot of stuff I don't really remember exactly. It's, it actually does become somewhat of a blur. Uh, Regancy, I do remember well. Uh, there was another character I saw a couple of years ago that... I can't, I can't remember the name of it, but I mean, my God, I was so horrible. I was so horrible, M mean, nasty, horrible character. And, I, and, I, and I, my, I, I was stabbed and shot, and I thought, wow, God, he's dead. And my God, I came back. And then I came back, and I wasn't dead. And, and I'm like, God, I don't remember any of this, but it was so wicked to watch. <laughs> I didn't see any of... Um, I didn't see any of the Power Rangers, my own stuff. No, I went back and watched when I got the set. You know, we go in and we do our job. And you see the screen, what, what you're recording, but you know, you don't run home and watch your work. I mean, you know, on occasion, but you know, I went back and watched a lot of the stuff the other, uh, well, about a year ago when I got the box set. and and. You know, I watched my Magna Defender. I'd never seen it. I never saw Magna Defender until just a year and a half ago. I watched that whole thing, and I was like, wow, I was good. <laughs> Isn't that awful? <laughs> and you found out something about Dragon Ball Z yesterday, too. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even realize I was in the original Dragon Ball Z. I, I was, uh, what's his name? Kamacha? Kamcha. Kamcha, yeah. Yeah, and I, I can't even tell you where I recorded him. I don't, I have no recollection of, I think, I do remember this. I was talking to Sean the other night at dinner, and I realized that when I, you know, I, um, my, my agent, Chris, showed me 
some of the stuff he did with the screaming. And I said, I used to have this, this, I had a part where I had to do a lot of screaming. I can't <laughs> remember what it was. And we realized, we put all of this together, and I, and, I, and, I, and I realized, oh my God, this is where I almost fainted from, from, from having no air. Meaning I, I'd gone along, falling through the sky, you know, all that, and all, it's all on one breath, because there's no place to cut in. And it was probably a 30 second, maybe 40 second cue on one breath. Now he's a trained uh, French horn player. Sean is actually a symphony, you know, for years he, he played French horn for the symphony, so he has tremendous breath control. And I have been doing voiceover for a long time, and I, and I understand breath control. So we kind of know what we're doing, but oh my God, I've never fainted in my life. And I started to go black, and I had about five seconds left, and I can barely see the character on the screen, and I'm, and I'm realizing, oh my God, this is, this is what fainting is. I, 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 this is happening. You're, you're going down. And everything started to get gray, and I thought, just let me finish this. I got about three seconds left. I can do it. And, and, uh, and I hit the ground, and I grabbed my head, and it felt like a knife just shot right through my head. It was really, really ugly. That's and the engineer said, are you all right? What's going on? Uh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It was brutal, but I saved it. I made the cue, and I didn't faint. I actually came out of it, so there was, that, was, that was probably my most insane recording experience ever. Yeah, okay. All right, so I'll be here all week. <laughs> let's move on to more uh, Power Rangers. Let's talk a little bit more about Wild Force and give uh, Lieutenant Taylor Earhart a chance to uh, go over her process to get into her role. Your process? Your process. So how did you get the role? Let's start at the beginning. Um. My agent called and said, okay, drive to this place. And it was 40 miles from my house and got two pages of dialogue and went okay. And um, I ended up going up, up, driving 40 miles each time, about six times, and saying the same dialogue each time. And I went, I think these people keep losing the tape because they keep bringing <laughs> me up. And so I started to get a little bit mad and have to wait two hours each time. Um, and I didn't realize they weren't reading me for uh, a ranger. They were, re they were reading me for the mentor, Princess Shayla. I don't know if you guys have seen Wild Force. I don't know. Um, but by the sixth time, I was so ticked off that I was there again that, they, <laughs> that by the last read, they, uh, they said, oh, no, she's too tough. She's going to be a ranger. So that's how I, I became a bad, uh, I'm not going to say it, the hardcore. curse word, a hardcore... Yeah. Uh, Air Force pilot on Power Rangers, which was really fun. Your anger suited you. Yes, well, I was a little bit resentful because I was the team leader till the red guy came in, so. But it's fun playing a tough, uh, tough chick because we're normally uh, not so tough. The boys get to play the, the tough Rangers, so. Were you a fan of Power Rangers before then? Had you ever seen any of the shows? Well, I was uh, 24 when I got cast. So, and it, it had just been on for a few years at that time. So I'm aging, I'm aging myself. So I was just a little bit old to start watching it. My time was like, you know, Fraggle Rock and Care Bears and I don't know if you guys, He-Man. He-Man. Yeah, Shira. Okay. But yeah, and um, our directors, many of them did not speak English. They were Japanese. They were flown over from Japan. From Bandai, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. So trying to figure out your character with a, a director that doesn't speak your language and they're just kind of showing you what they want was pretty fascinating. That that was a first. So, so. Power Rangers is neat because, you know, half of the show is already shot. Well, not half, but maybe a, a third of the show is already shot, and then you have to sort of match up and do the part where your helmet's off. Or So what was it like Absolutely. putting on the suit for the first time? and? Well, I actually only wore the suit about three times. And um, I'm a little curvy, so the suit sort of is, where it didn't fit all that well. They're a little bit snug. <laughs> they were made for men and for small Japanese men, not for me. And here's a funny story. Um, in Japan, for my season, my ranger was a man. 
But in the US, they're more PC and they're like, well, we had to have like at least two females. So I played really this man here. So my poor stunt guy here, this lovely little Japanese guy, um, each day would put on a padded bra and a padded butt <laughs> to play me. And he was so proud to play me. And I said, thank you so much each day for, you know, getting out there and he representing yeah. my character, yes. In um, a sports bra. Yeah, he's, and, and I would watch him put it on and just go, you know, God bless you, <laughs> thank you so much. So, it's kind of funny. Poor did, guy. Did you guys ever get to interact? Because I know Goldar was on a few seasons. He actually played a character, Kerrigan played a character on Wild Force. Yeah, I, I did. I played a monitor org, uh, the monster. We used to call him uh, Monsters Du Jour. And Scott Page Pagder, who was our director and directed every, all, all like eight years of all ten the years, Power right? Rangers. Well, maybe ten yeah. until they sold it to Disney. Ten, yeah, yeah ten. Um, he knows where all the bodies are buried. And he knows all the secrets. Yeah, he knows all the secrets. I'm, you know, if I had anything, if I wished anything, yes, no. In answer to your question, we were virtually passing ships. Um, and we didn't I, meet. And, and we could have actually passed each other because I did come in to do that monster and I may have left and, no, I would have remembered. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Kerrigan. <laughs> so, yeah, we're, uh, like I said, we single track. So, you know, we don't really, you know, we not only don't interact with each other, but we really don't, you know, we just pass. As I'm going in, somebody's coming out of the ADR studio, and there's a terrible misconception, and it's okay. I'm getting used to it. But no, I was not in the suit. It, 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 it's the equivalent of Darth, of Darth Vader. It, it, it's the equivalent of, of, of Jack in the Box. It, it's like, no, I, I'm the character. I'm the character Goldar. That guy is in the hot sun in 100 degrees, and if he doesn't want to do the job for $14 a day, then they'll get somebody else. So with all due respect to that gentleman in that hot suit. You know, I'm, I'm sorry to say I never even got to meet Jeb the dog. I never laid eyes on Jeb in, in, in VR Troopers, and there were two Jebs, and I never once saw my suit. I never saw the suit. And I, I hear the suit was somehow destroyed somewhere when Disney bought it and something happened, so the suit's all gone. Anyway. What happened to the first Jeb? There were two working dogs. Uh, oh, yeah, one yeah. didn't just like, yeah. and then and the other one stepped in. No, yeah, no, no, they just worked them both. One that's a one, much one, story. It's like, it's like the movies where, you know, those dog movies. Well, there really aren't one, you know, dog. There are ten dogs because the, all the dogs do certain things better than others. So, ah. yeah, and, and they, Jeb talked because, the way they made him talk was, and I guess this could be considered maybe a little animal question abuse. You know, they, they made him eat peanut butter. So, yeah. So, Which you know, dogs aren't supposed to eat? The poor thing. God knows how much peanut butter he ate through the day. <laughs> but uh, it certainly made my job easier. You know, <laughs> virtual reality is a gas. <laughs> How long, anyway. how long did it take you to figure out how to time your, your voice with the way the mouth moved on the little camera? Again, we cut our teeth shooting anime back in the day, and we just really were really good dubbers, you know? I mean, I held the record with Greg Snagoff for being like 63 cues in an hour. Yeah, I think it was 63. And then he that's beat hard. 64, and then I beat 65, and that's about as far as it got. And I, I don't know who wound up being the winner. Um, but, but, I mean, I'm talking knocking down cues, knocking down cues fast. One take stuff, um, punching in if you miss something at the end, and an engineer who's so adept that you're like, you're like a married couple. I just look back at Leo and go, but, the, yeah, got, okay, go. And boom, he punched in the red light, and we... So we were, we were really good at what we do, did, a, a, as far as dubbing. And, and so, we, again, we were a small acting troupe. And that's how I got cast in, 
in uh, Power Rangers. There, there was no audition process. I, the producer called in five of us, the ones he wanted, who he's worked with for years, t Tony Oliver, and he li literally, he said, you, you, Mike, you're playing, um, what, what, what are the two, the blue, the, uh, the squat and Babu. Dave Mallow playing, you're doing Babu. Kerrigan, there's this gold guy, I don't think he has much of a part. Uh, just throw some monster big voice on him. And, and that's how we were cast. And we didn't, we didn't know this thing was gonna go. This was a, you know, a, a teaser pilot. So, you know, we paid no attention to it at all. I, I didn't give this any thought at all when I threw the voice on Goldar. And it was a small little tiny part for 16 episodes. And then Tony calls me and says, hey, we made a mistake. This guy's huge. <laughs> I said, whoa, 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 I don't, I don't know, I'm not, how huge? That voice is brutal. He said, he's big, so you better figure out what you're doing with that voice. And that's when people say, oh, it seems like it was really different in the beginning, and then your voice kind of changed or something. And they said, you're damn right it did. I, I went down into my basement and spent about an hour and a half figuring out how am I going to make this thing work so that I can actually record. And I worked about an hour, hour and a half, and I finally got to the point where I, I, was, rolling, I was rolling over my chords. A lot of air is in this voice. So I got away with about 45 minutes of recording with no, no problem. And then, but that was kind of it. 45, I'm good. I got other jobs. I'm done for today. So, so that's kind of how that went. It's not, uh, it's not a real glorious, oh my gosh, audition story. It's like we were just picked and, and we didn't really think it was going to go. You know, when we first looked at the footage of the teaser, we were like, what? this isn't going to go anywhere. What is this? And, well, called that one wrong. Now it's one of the most profitable franchises in the world. Um, did you guys, this is a question that I asked the last time we had Power Rangers on. There was that darker reboot that was made by fans that sort of took that, a lot of edge onto the Power Rangers uh, theme. And it was actually, was it the, the Pink Ranger that ended up being evil? Or, or it, anyways, did you guys get a chance to see that? What did you think about? Did you? I saw part of it. It's it so was good. really cool. Yeah, it's so cool. I think the film is going to be more like that. Well, I believe Bondi sent a now. nice cease and desist letter to them saying this franchise really? is for children. But then, of course, oh. it got like millions and millions of views. So maybe they mm. changed their mind. Well, I, think I don't think it hurt the Power Rangers. <laughs> no. No, I think what they're doing, I mean, again, it's all um, speculation at this point. Quite honestly, they're keeping a real tight lid on it. But the budget's, uh, it's big. And, uh, you know. 75 million? 75. It's a lot. Um, and they're competing, I mean, that you know, they're competing with all of those big tentpole movies, so it's becoming a little nerve-wracking for me, respectful of what are we doing with Goldar, where's Goldar, why are we not announcing Goldar, they're shooting the movie. Well, I know I'm in it, I, meaning my character, because, you know, the toys are coming out, you know, I don't think they're exactly coming out with brand new Goldar toys because I'm not in the movie. So, and how do you do an MMPR reboot without Goldar? I'm the only one that went down and kicked their asses. So, I don't know. I'm, so we're sitting and waiting. I talk to Chris, we talk every day. So they, are they ever going to announce who's, either who's playing me or are they CGI-ing it? And uh, maybe I'm gonna do the voice still. I, I, I don't know. Anyway. Ah. Uh, Nerve-wracking. That's awesome. That is not the question I was asking, but I'm so yeah. glad that you said that. What, you're asking what the I'm movie. Asking, I, said well, I had forgotten that they were even making that movie. I can't wait to watch it, because now like all of the people that watched in season one, Gen 1, are like 30, 32, 33, and like weird people that have kids that, that go to the movies, so that's going to be amazing. Well, I did, yeah, I saw you did ask a question about I did see the whole dark the, I'm talking thing. about the dark yeah. power Yeah, Rangers. I saw that, and I thought it was pretty, pretty wicked, pretty well shot. It was like, wow, this is wild, but... Uh, I don't think they'll go that dark, but yeah, the, the movie is shooting in Vancouver as we speak. The big new movie. Awesome. Yeah, so it it's actually has a release date. It's, uh, Chris, what is it, March 6th? Si March 26th. He literally he just, just walked, walked around the corner. I think it's the 26th, he said. Yeah, anyway, it, 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 it has a release date, um, mid-March or late-March. 
uh, of 2017. So, you know, we'll see. We don't know any more than any of you. That'll be interesting, because then it'll be dubbed over in Japan, and then they're, you know, I wonder how that's going to be to have Power Rangers come out of the United States and then get treated to the dubbing over there versus yeah. the opposite. Well, you know, I learned something. I'm going to Puerto Rico in May, and, you know, I found myself asking, I, are, are, are we sure that they, did they see, did they hear me? Did they see it in English? Or was it, was it dubbed? And as it turns out, <clears throat> it was subtitled and it, it was not dubbed in Puerto Rico. So this thing ran a, a lot of places all over the world that nobody dubbed it. Now my hunch will be, it will go, this big movie will go all over the world and will not be dubbed. There'll be subtitles like any other big picture. Yeah, I think. So post Power Ranger, uh, how have you stayed busy, Allison? Like what have you been working on since then? I d did some shows, um, and I did some hosting. I hosted an hour-long uh, morning show called Actors Entertainment. And um, I've been getting ready to shoot two different films, and, I'm, and I just found out last month that I'm shooting a film with a bunch of the original Power Rangers. I can't talk about that, because they signed a non-disclosure agreement. But, um, so that's going to be really fun. So look out for that. Some of your favorite Power Rangers, if you're a Power Ranger fan, like the big ones are going to be in it. So I'm really excited to shoot that. Uh, uh, we're going to cool. shoot a teaser uh, for it next month. So you'll be able to see that very soon. And, um, and what's funny, you guys, is I've been to Waco. I was here almost 12 years ago. After the Power Rangers, my mom and I bought a Curves franchise. You guys know Curves. This yes. is the home of yeah. Curves Women's Gym. Uh, and we just closed it last year after 11 years. So I think it's really apropos that after doing the Power Rangers that year, I bought a Curves. I came to Waco. And now I've started doing conventions and meeting fans for the Power Rangers. And I'm in Waco. <laughs> That's really awesome. <laughs> Oh, so, yeah. curves. And uh, keep your eyes out, you know, if, if you are a fan, um, I'm, I'm actually the lead in these two films. So after 30 years, <laughs> persistence and determination, patience. So, yeah. So are you a hero in both of the, both of the movies? Oh, no. <laughs> no. Um, in one movie, I actually play an actress who's a pain and... Um, no, she's kind of a, a bad person. Shocking. Actors. And uh, no. And the other one, uh, no, I, I, I'm playing death in the other one. So, no, I'm, I'm not playing a hero. Man, death in a uh, high-maintenance actress. That is yeah, they're ah. really fun. I cannot <laughs> wait to play them. I feel like a psychiatrist would have something to say about like those <laughs> roles going to you. Like. Well, what does that say about me? <laughs> and, I, and I play terrible. Taylor, too, who wasn't very nice. I'm nice. We also played Barbie, and she's nice. Yeah, I, I was Barbie. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's a funny story. You know how Barbie, her, her body is not really natural, right? It's very, very curvy. They taped it all down for that shoot. I went, really? They, they taped it all down. I was like... That's really, really weird. You're selling me as this doll. I spin in the ad, and I'm singing, and I spin, and then I turn into this Barbie who's very curvy. I was like, why did you tape it all down? <laughs> it's so weird. Oh, well. Mattel. <laughs> Is, aren't Mattel and Bandai owned by the same people or something like that? Because so. I always said the know. toys were similar. Yeah. Like, uh, maybe I just collected them at the same time. I don't know. So what keeps you busy lately, Goldar? Yeah, um, <coughs> I'm doing a lot of writing. Uh, I got a couple screenplays that are in development. Um, I've directed a lot over the years. Uh, I just finished directing a travel show that was probably the biggest nightmare I've ever been involved in in my life. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I got it done. I made my day. That's what we say in Hollywood. That means we got all of our shots, all of our locations, everything was done. That's called, did you make your day? I made my day in winter light with no crew, 
running around with a host from location to location, restaurant to winery, winery to train station, stewardship, uh, just an absolute nightmare. And we did it all in three months, two hours and 30 minutes of edited film, uh, two one minute promos, one 30 second promo and 18 vignettes, three months. Makes you miss voice acting. Oh, I, you know what? I, this directing, uh, talk about over glorify. I, I don't care if I ever direct anything ever again. The way I direct in the future is a camera tent and I'm watching the monitor and everybody's out there doing and running and setting up and I'm looking at a monitor like this. It was a nice take. Nailed it. Let's do another one for safety, but she's good. We're good. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what directing is. <laughs> uh, well, what about voice acting? Do you ever direct voice actors? Oh, God, I did for years, absolutely. I don't anymore. I decided to get out of uh, uh, Helltown. I'm Hollywood uh, 12 years ago, and I moved up to a little, uh, a little town called Morro Bay on the Central Coast. Oh. So, but I do go down for work. I do record out of my house. I'm going down Wednesday to do... Uh, some of uh, Janice and Ross uh, Bagdasarian's new show, uh, Alvin, which is a beautifully animated show. And Janice called me the other day, so I'm going down to, to record some voices for her on Wednesday. And uh, I'm going to down to the same day to do Family Guy. Um, that guy who's in jail, David Durst, basically, I've, I think it's David Durst. Uh, he did some horrifying, horrible thing. I haven't looked into it. Anyway, she said... I think you can match this guy. I could match him. I sent her over a quick recording before actually I got on the plane. And she said, well, she wanted me to work Thursday. And you know, this is the way this stuff works. It's like, are you kidding me? I finally get a call from Family Guy. I haven't worked Family Guy in nine months and you want me to work Thursday. And I'm, I'm no, I'm on a plane at 6 a.m. I mean, I'm not canceling Waco, even though it's gonna pay the Family Guy's worth a lot of money. And, you know, a lot of guys would have said, Waco, you're gone, I'm going down. And I said, Linda, I'm on a plane at 6, I can, I can shoot it from here, which they never let me do. you got to go down. I drive three hours to Los Angeles. It takes me longer to do the paperwork than it does to do the job. I turn right around and head right back home, and that's what I'm doing Wednesday. And if you, you, you know, Family Guy, any, any of these places, you, 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 you come down and play in our sandbox. We're not interested in you. I don't care what equipment you have. They want you to do it. But, and, and, you know, and, you know, in all fairness, they want the levels to be exactly just right. And they're mixing the show. And it's like, you know, am I complaining? No. It's just like, God, it's so silly. But it's part of the drill. That's really cool that you do that you do Family Guy. That's an extremely popular show. That's uh, you know, I mean, it dominates its time slot. Like I love Family Guy. Well, I don't do much. I I I I'm kind of their go-to guy for Jack Nicholson. I'm their go-to guy for Michael Douglas, and I did. Can you do some? Well, I don't know the lines, but Michael Douglas is in my wheelhouse. I mean, you know, what are you trying to do to me, Alex? I mean, it's basically, you know, me. You know, I mean, I, I, Michael and I are kind of, kind of the same thing. As far as Jack goes, shit. Well, hell. Jack was VR Troopers. Jack was Jake, the, what's his name, the dog. You know, I just threw Jack Nicholson on him, and they said, I don't know if we can get away with that. Um, and so the legal looked into it, and everyone finally decided, you know, we love what you're doing with that. Let's go with it. And if we get a cease and desist, we'll just reshoot. You know, and, and Jack left us alone. He didn't, he didn't care, you know. So, um, so yeah, that, I'm kind of their voice. What, in, in voiceover, we call that voice matching. Basically, can you match so-and-so? So, and what's uh, Jim Cameron? I did Jim Cameron, who, you know, it, it's hard to, do a, to match somebody that has no hook, what we call no hook. Jack Nicholson has a hook, you know. Uh, you know, and, and you find that, and you, you know, it, it, it's, in, it's in, and believe it or not, Jack Nicholson is very close to Michael Douglas. You can literally morph, no pun intended, from going 
out of Michael Douglas, and before you turn around, you're doing Michael. What are you doing? And you're booming. Oh, well, you just drop it a few, and oh, you're right into Jack. You know? That's it's, neat. it's weird. It's weird. Yeah. It's music. A lot of the voice actors that work on Family Guy do a lot of characters. I mean, that, I mean, that's just, and of course they would want you to come in because the uh, creator is just a nut for audio quality. Like, he trained under Frank Sinatra C Jr., right, or Sr.? Um, you're talking about Seth? Yeah. Um, I don't really know much about Seth. Uh, I, 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 Seth used to direct, you know, in the beginning. He was there directing, and then he was directing me on the telephone. Um, and I don't really know what, what's, who, what Seth's uh, history is as far as who he studied with or anything else. I know he's a wonderful guy. Just so much fun. He's cool. All right. Uh, we have a few minutes left. Did you want to tell a quick story from uh, Power Rangers? I will. I'll tell a, a funny story just to give you guys an idea how big this show was in 93, 4, 5. Um, Richard Horvitz and I, I lived in the Hollywood Hills. And uh, one day, as fate would have it, it's in the middle of summer, and neither of us were working on this day. And I said, do you want to go to the beach and go body surfing? And he said, it sounds great. Let's go. So uh, Richard, by the way, played Alpha in, in Power Rangers, right? And so down we go, Beachwood Canyon, and there's a four-way stop at Scenic. And I rolled through the stop, and I'll be damned if there wasn't a motorcycle cop sitting right there waiting for the first person or the next person. I'm sure I wasn't the first person that day. And I said, oh, crap. Richard said, what? I said, there's a cop. I'm getting pulled over. God, gosh darn it. So uh, the guy's right out of the movies. I mean, the teardrop mirror glasses, right? And the boots up to here. And it's like, oh, man, this guy is by the book. Forget about it. Well, I, I learned something when I was flying back and forth to New York. And I was upgraded to first class because I said I was Goldar at the ticket counter. And I, I carry my pictures with me everywhere in those days. And I, and I have no shame. I will barter. I will barter with anybody. I'll barter right now down at the bar for drinks. I don't care. So the cop walks up, I walk up. In those days, you could get out of the car. It was OK. And he has his ticket book and license and reg and all the rest of the BS. And, I, and he goes to write. And I said, just hold, hold on, hold on one second. Just hold on. He says, what? I said, do you have kids? He said, yeah, why? I'm Goldar. Didn't say Power Rangers. I'm Goldar. And he looks at me. And he looks around. Uh, we're in a residential Hollywood Hills neighborhood. There are houses up in the hills. And, and a lot of echoey up there, too. <clears throat> and he looks me, and he looks at me hard. And I'm set, we're standing there face to face. And then he goes, do it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, OK. I, <clears throat> it's loud. Do it. And Richard's looking back from the car going, what in the hell is he doing? So I said, OK. Yes, Empress. Closed his book, walked to the car, and I got signing away, signing up pictures for those five boys <laughs> as fast as I could sign. And I could see he was getting nervous as I was like on number three. And I'm going, God damn, your dad takes a bribe. He's a good boy. It's Tommy. <laughs> and I, I have no more time. I can feel it. It's now just, you know, Jimmy, Kerrigan Mayhan. Now it's just Kerrigan Mayhan. And I hand him all five pictures, and he never looked back. He took those pictures. He walked straight to his motorcycle. He put them in his saddlebag, started that motorcycle, and away he went. And Horvitz looked at me and said, I do not believe what you just did. I said, well, now maybe you'll start carrying pictures, Richard. <laughs> There's a great lesson in there, and that's it's to bribe, bribe your way to the top, folks. I like it. I have no shame. Ah. <laughs> if you hadn't done that, you'd have had a ticket. My oh, yeah, I, I, license. I didn't think I had a chance. I yeah. mean, even with the pictures, I thought, ah, this isn't going to fly with this guy. But it flew. It flew. And he went bye-bye. And off to the beach we went. <laughs> ah, 
That works. All right, everybody, let's give a round of applause to our Power Rangers. Thanks for sitting in. Have fun today. Are you guys Thank heading you over guys. for photo ops or the table? Uh, we're at the table. Come no, say hi. Nice. Y'all are, are close either way. But yeah, you guys can go <laughs> over there, talk to the Power Come Rangers, by our booth and ask and say questions. Hi.